My film is, uh, is called You Don't Like the Truth, Four Days Inside Guantanamo. And it, it's the story of a four-day interrogation done by the, secret, the Canadian Secret Service in Guantanamo in February 2003. If, if, if you were bright, Omar, and I want you to think about this for a few minutes, if you're smart, tell me something that can help me, that can show my government that you're willing to help us against a group of people who are bent on doing bad things to us. You want me to lie? How do you lie? Love I don't want you to lie. I just want you to tell the truth. That's why I told you the truth. You don't like the truth. This is a young kid, Omar Khadr. He was caught in a battle in Afghanistan. And Omar Khadr is a Canadian. He was 15 at the time. And is, he was traveling with his father in Afghanistan. His father was a, kind of a well-known terrorist but he carried his family with him. And Omar Khadr, he put him in a house, you know, in a compound where he was supposed to do translation for these Taliban, with whom he was. So in July 2002, there was a huge attack on a compound in Afghanistan, and he was the sole survivor of this. And there was a, one American soldier who died. So since then, he's been accused of a war crime, of killing this, this uh, American. Of course, nothing was proof of that because there were other fighters there. But he was arrested, even though he was 15, and he was put in Bagram, where he was tortured many, many days. And then he was moved to Guantanamo. You call your, sorry, you pronounce your last name Kidder? Kidder. Kidder, okay. You got a card. Thank you. Date of birth? That's September uh, 1986. Date of September. We started to work with this, and we found very, very quickly that the dramatic arc of the film was exactly these four days. You know, we didn't need to play with this material. We just needed to cut it down a little bit. Then we contacted different people. It goes from Excel mates from uh, with Omar Khadr in Afghanistan or in Guantanamo. We found a couple of uh, military, American military soldiers who were willing to talk to us. His lawyers, American military lawyers, his Canadian lawyers, people mainly who were in contact with Omar Khadr. Because you have to understand too that since he's been arrested in July 2002, no one can talk to him, no one can see him. He had been put in isolation for years. At the time, as everyone understood, these detainees were in a legal black hole, as the, as the English Court of Appeal had put it. They had no ability to speak with a lawyer. They had no right to appear before a court. They couldn't bring a habeas corpus application. They hadn't been charged with anything, much less tried uh, for anything. And it was, it was obvious to everyone who looked at the situation, including the United Nations, and by then some American courts, that this was unlawful. There were so many interesting stories from all these people that we interviewed. The struggle was to keep the focus on the interrogation. That, that was the real struggle, to come back to the interrogation. Because sometime when we went Bagram, you know, for, uh, in the film, when he, he's talking about Bagram, and we go with the other prisoners who tell of their own experience of Bagram and how they saw Omar in Bagram, we could have We've, we could have gone much longer because it was fascinating. But at the same time, we didn't want to lose track of the interrogation because the interrogation in itself, it's so fascinating. Is there, is there anything you want to tell me before we wrap this up? Omar? Well, in Canada, more than 50% more than of the people in Canada wants him to rot in jail because they're afraid. Because he's Muslim, because he has an Arabic name, and because his father was a terrorist, then he is a terrorist. And then he should rot in jail. I will never forget his case. I will never forget the individual or what happened to him or how I saw him. For me, his case epitomizes everything that is wrong in Guantanamo and the war on terror. 
a lot of people come out in and, and the film and said, I had such a prejudice against him before seeing this film. And you opened my eye. You know, I see, I see him so differently now. I see the situation so differently, and I feel embarrassed. I feel ashamed. 